So this video is my attempt to create a lemon base battery. So the materials that I use are uh, yellow lemons, some uh, iron base screws, alligator wires, and other stuff. Now the next thing that I did, as demonstrated by this picture here, is to put the screws in the lemons in that order. Each lemon battery will add to the overall voltage of the entire network when connected in series. The next thing I did is connect each lemon battery with the alligator clips as shown in the picture. Now the next thing I did was connect the lemon battery to a digital multimeter and the voltage was very very low, only 35 millivolts. Not enough to power anything at this point. The amount of current that this lemon battery is currently generating is very small, only one microamp. Well, there's only one way to fix that problem, and that is by charging the lemon battery with a 9 volt battery to increase its voltage. After charging it for about a minute, the voltage of the lemon battery is a little bit higher than what it was, and it's still pretty low overall. It's only 72 millivolts. We still can't do anything uh, with this battery at this point, so we need to charge it for a longer time period. The amount of current that's flowing uh, through the lemon battery when using a 9 volt battery to charge it is very small. It's only 0.3 milliamps. So I'm going to have to increase the voltage of the, the battery so that it can charge a lot faster. So as you saw in the last video, the amount of current that is flowing through this lemon battery when being charged by 99 volts is only 3.7 milliamps, which is very small. That's going to take a long time for this battery to charge. And when connecting the lemon battery directly to a meter without the, uh, the 99 volt battery attached to it, the amount of current that is flowing through the lemon battery is still pretty small. It's like 0.15 milliamps and the voltage even though it's a lot higher than before, it's like 1.6, 1.5, it's not stable. The voltage is dropping quickly. So we're going to have to do something else to fix this problem. So what I decided to do is to place the metal screws in a solution of baking soda. The purpose of this is to increase the electrical conductivity inside the lemon battery so it can charge faster and also deliver more current when being used as a power source. So here is a simple diagram showing the lemon battery being charged by a 99 volt battery source. Electrons flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the lemon battery and back to the positive terminal. As we saw in the previous video demonstration, the current, it started at 120 and then gradually it increased to approximately 200 milliamps 
which is the same as 0.2 amps. A thousand milliamps is equal to one amp. Now, let's talk about what we've learned here. By placing the metal screws in a solution of baking soda or sodium bicarbonate, the electrical conductivity inside the lemon battery greatly increased. In the last video demonstration, we saw gas bubbles emanating from both the silver metal screw and also the brass looking screw. Why is that? What type of gases are coming out of those metal screws? We're going to talk about that. Now the silver metal screw is attached to the positive terminal of the battery and it represents the anode part of the battery. That's where oxidation occurs. The brass looking screw is attached to the negative terminal of the battery, it's attached to the black wire. And that represents the cathode of the lemon battery. It's where reduction occurs. Now inside the lemon battery, we have molecules such as water, H2O. We have hydrogen ions because the lemon battery is acidic. We have sodium ions from the solution of baking soda. And we also have bicarbonate, which is HCO3-. As electrons flow into the cathode, the hydrogen ions will be attracted to them because opposites attract. Negatively charged ions are attracted to positively charged ions. The hydrogen ions pick up the electrons, and when they do, they turn into hydrogen gas, H2. And so the gas that is emanating from the cathode or the brass looking uh, metal screw is hydrogen gas. Now at the anode, water decomposes into oxygen and hydrogen ions. And here's the half reaction for that. You have two water molecules, break it down into four hydrogen ions, one molecule of oxygen gas, and it's going to give up four electrons. So as water decomposes into oxygen and hydrogen, electrons are flowing out of the anode. And so that's where oxidation occurs. So electrons are entering the cathode but leaving the anode. And so the gas that is emanating from the anode or the silver looking screw is oxygen gas. So those are the gases that are coming out of this lemon battery when being overcharged by this high voltage. It's hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now, there's a third type of gas that can evolve from the lemon battery, and it's carbon dioxide. When the bicarbonate ions interact with the acidic environment of the lemon battery, it's going to react with the hydrogen ions, forming initially carbonic acid. Now, carbonic acid is unstable and at certain conditions, it can easily decompose into water, which is a liquid at room temperature, plus carbon dioxide gas. So that's another gas that can emanate from this battery um, when you add sodium bicarbonate to it. Now at this point, even with increase in the conductivity of the solution in the lemon battery, it's still not strong enough to power an LED the voltage is still too low. It's about somewhere between one and 1.5 volts. And so we still need more energy in order to power an LED. In order to solve this problem, we're going to change the cathode and the anode material. So at the cathode, we're going to introduce aluminum foil because it has a high standard reduction potential and we're going to replace the silver screw with copper metal so I have the copper foil wrapped around the silver screw but I'm going to take out the silver screw once the copper foil is in the lemon battery and let's see what's going to happen
So as we could see, the green LED is now on. The reason being, as we saw in the previous video demonstration, is the voltage was stable around 2.79, 2.8 volts, which is enough to power this LED, which requires a minimum of two volts to get it going. Now, the amount of current that is flowing in this circuit is very small, it's only 0.07 milliamps, which surprisingly was enough to power this LED. I'm surprised by that. But nevertheless though, we got a voltage of 2.8 volts without charging this battery after placing the different materials. But adding aluminum and copper, as we can clearly see, makes a huge difference in the performance of the lemon battery. Now we're going to try to increase the voltage of this lemon battery by charging it up with the 99 volt battery one more time. So after charging the lemon battery for about a minute or two, it wasn't that long, the lemon battery is a lot stronger. The charging current was about 0.13 amps or 130 milliamps. This is due to the fact of putting the metal screws in a baking soda solution, which increase the electrical conductivity inside the lemon battery, thus decreasing its internal resistance. So now the lemon battery has a, a much higher voltage than before. The voltage is now about 4 volts, and we can see why the LED is so bright now. The amount of current that is flowing in this circuit now is about, I forgot what the number is, 1.2 milliamps, but it's much higher than the 0 0.07 milliamps that we saw earlier in this video. So let's summarize the main takeaways from this video. To increase the strength of the lemon battery, we need to use the right anode and cathode materials. In this case, aluminum and copper was a good choice. The second thing we needed to do was increase the electrical conductivity of the lemon battery solution. One way to achieve that was to put the anode and cathode materials in an electrolyte solution. In this case, baking soda was a good choice. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational and informative. Thanks for watching.